Someone recently asked Jordan Peterson what his perspective on pornography was, and this is what he said. It's a surfeit of hedonistic pleasure. It's whim-based. It doesn't constitute the kind of action that lays the groundwork for functional relationships. It stops you from being desperate enough to go and put yourself on the line in a real relationship. It trains you sexually to respond only to pornography. It requires that you use more and more novel forms of pornography as your habit develops in order to get the same kick. It increases the probability of impotence in real life. So, no, this isn't a good thing. It's, it's not a good thing. Something that Jordan Peterson said here really struck me. The idea that pornography pacifies you and prevents you from taking important risks in your life because you have that immediate gratification in pornography. It's taking all of that desire out of you, not just sexual, but the desire for adventure and to discover and to, you know, move. It really just pushes you into this place of staying as you are because you're content in this comfortable space. Oh, it's the evening. I'm tired. Uh, might as well just watch pornography because it'll give me a sense of relief as opposed to pushing that aside and realizing, man, what can I do with my life? What, is, what kind of adventure is God inviting me into right now? And what does he want to do with these desires in my heart and this passion in my heart? By watching pornography, you are pacifying your desires, those natural desires and motivation to actually pursue a woman and become the person that that woman would actually want to be with. And also for women that struggle with pornography, the same thing. It's like, you you can't, you're not, you're preventing yourself from becoming that person that that man would actually want because you're focused on just staying as you are. You're, you're, you're not changing. You're not transforming because you're complacent in watching this. And so we, when we push ourselves out of this, when we rid ourselves of pornography, then all of a sudden we're pursuing somebody. We're taking risks, right? We're, we're accepting the, the possibility of rejection because those desires in our heart and that motivation is actually there. We haven't pacified it. In a weird way, pornography actually teaches you that there isn't more to life. Like this is it. This is as good as it gets. Like it's immediate gratification. It feels about as good as it can feel. And um, there's not a lot more. So why would you seek something more? But that is a lie. It really is. Like I need you guys to know that. That's a lie. As good as pornography feels, as good as it's in the moment, you're like, oh, this is great. This is giving me some sort of sense of relief and sexual pleasure. And my anxiety is eased in this moment. And I don't feel depressed. And, and all these things, it's a spike of dopamine that's just going crazy, right? You feel about as good as you can feel. Um, it's a lie that that's as good as it gets. That's a lie. And God is actually inviting you into something so much better. And I think about what the Bible says about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. It's not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable. Love is self-giving, right? It's not, it's selfless. It's not selfish. But pornography is is selfish. It's tr it's teaching you that that's the way it is, but that's not God's way. We got to come to terms with that this is so much bigger than just a sexual issue, right? You have wounds in your heart that you're trying to fill by the connection you feel in pornography. You have um, things that you want to satisfy within your soul that you think that this dopamine hit or experiencing this fulfillment in this moment, that it could satisfy you in some ways. You think that it can provide you the comfort that you're looking for. And so you buy into the lie that, yes, this is good for me, that this is... This is what I need right now. No, no, it's not, friend. It won't provide that comfort. It won't provide that satisfaction. It won't provide that fulfillment. But the crazy thing is you already know that. It's a lie. And I'm going to keep saying that. When Jesus came to this earth, he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want to be freed from the lie, you need to come to know the truth. And the truth is not just a thing out there. It is a person. The God-man, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. And that is not just the truth as a concept, but the truth as Jesus, because he has come to this earth to take the punishment for our sin, for our wickedness, for our rebellion, for every single time you watch pornography, for every time you knew that God was watching you, that you knew that God didn't want you doing that, but you went down that road anyway because you wanted that instant gratification, you wanted that sexual pleasure, you wanted that instant comfort. 
You looked aside at Jesus. You saw him standing there and you said, no, not today. I don't want him. I don't want you. And you betrayed him. And we've all betrayed Jesus. We look at Judas, somebody that walked with Jesus for three years, and we say, how could you do that? You saw his teaching. You saw his ministry. You saw his miracles. And yet you still turned aside and betrayed him. But we're no better. We've turned aside. We've betrayed him on so many accounts. But yet he still loved us and died for us to take the weight of our shame and our guilt that you wouldn't have to bear that anymore. You wouldn't have to put on a facade that I'm just a, a good person or it doesn't affect my life or, you know, I don't really feel this shame or guilt and I just kind of put it, push it under the covers and it's not a big deal. But no, you can lay that all on Jesus so you can actually be free. Can you imagine that for a second? Just imagine your life where you are free, where you are released from the bondage of this of this sin and, and you're made New. Well, that's what Jesus provides. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, that what we deserve for our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So how do you receive that? You put your faith in Jesus. You repent for your sin. You say, God, I am sorry. I, I submit these things to you. I humble myself before you. God, humble me. I, I'm sorry that I've Turned, turned away from you, that I've rebelled against you, that I've, that I've continued to watch these things that I know are waging war against my soul and just because it feels good. Lord, I'm sorry. I put my faith in you to save me as my Savior and my Lord. And in that, not just in that prayer, but in God's transforming work that is taking place within you, he is doing a work where he is freeing you. So where do we begin? We must begin with practical wisdom and spiritual weapons. Imagine every time that you're tempted or you're uh, triggered, you go to the Lord in prayer and you ask him for strength and deliverance. What if that was a routine consistent in your life that you were continually made aware that God is with me in this moment and he's giving me the strength to overcome this? A piece of practical wisdom, get some sort of safe search blocker on your computer so that you're not um, able to access these websites also on your phone. One of the things that I found really really beneficial is get a service called Covenant Eyes. It will send a report of your search history to somebody that you can be accountable to. If you click the link in my description, you can get 30 days free. It is an affiliate link, but I truly believe it's going to help you. Another spiritual weapon, scripture memorization. In Psalm 119.11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. A heart that is fastened to the scripture is not easily deceived. Last piece of practical wisdom for today, unfollow all social media accounts that tempt you or trigger you. This might seem a little bit ruthless, but I found it to be beneficial not only in my life, but also in those people that I know have done this in their life too. They found a great benefit from, from it as well. So I just encourage you go through all of your following on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, script, subscriptions, everything that it has acted as a trigger in your life, just cut it out. And you might see, I say, oh, that's extreme. It's not a big deal, whatever. If you're serious about breaking free, then sometimes it's going to look a little bit drastic. The last thing I want to do is shame you. I want you to find healing and forgiveness in God. I don't want your sin to be a border between you and God that draws you away from him or makes you feel like, man, I just can't talk to God right now because I've done this over and over again. I don't want you to feel that way because God is welcoming you back as his child. Like I think of the prodigal child who goes and spends all of his money and wastes it, wastes the father's inheritance, all the blessings that his father had worked so hard to provide his son and yet he blew it all. And yet when the son returns, he throws him a party. That testifies to God's love and his grace, not that we deserve it, but that he welcomes us again with celebration and rejoicing and taking delight in us that while we, when we are in him, we have a new identity. It's not about the things of old and who we once were and all those past um, pains and, and mistakes and sins. It's about who we are now and we are a child of God and he receives us again and again and he loves us and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Do not use that as an excuse to carry on in sin, but rather see that as motivation to continue to honor our father because we are adopted into his family. Thank you so much for watching this video, friends. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos every single week. Um, a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. You guys know I'm so appreciative of everyone on there. If you want to support what I'm doing, and I'd be so grateful if you did, hit the link in my description and sign up today. You get access to all sorts of fun rewards that you can check out there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for watching again, guys, and I will see you next time. God bless.